This is called a memorandum of law for its fiduciary duty. Okay, thank you. You bet. A lot of those folks may sound somewhat repetitive, and I guess maybe there's partially true of that. But the point that they're trying to drive home here, that all of these things that we're not aware of or we take for granted are a breach against you. How many times are you going to let somebody poke you with a sharp stick, so to speak, and we do nothing about it, we say nothing about it, we just continue. When we do that, here's what we're saying. It's okay to you to do that, and I'm going to allow you to keep on doing it. That's what we're telling them. That's why I want to encourage all of you to watch that film, that movie called Battle of Athens. Well, I'm telling you, that made a way of an impression on me. Yes, sir. A couple of months ago, I was able to find it on YouTube. So it might be easy to find still. Yes. Well, I made it. It's a movie. There are a couple of things in there that are influenced by the fact that it's a movie, but for the most part, it's based upon a true story. The theme of it is true. And what they did was true. Yes, sir. All right. Could you uh, repeat the story you told me last night about the guy in the hammer? I think that would be appropriate at this time. No, not the story I told you about what? The guy with the hammer in the garage no. last night. I think that would be appropriate. <laughs> It kind of illustrates the point here, doesn't it? I thank you for that. Well, I was telling the gentleman last night that the story about a guy walking down the street and this neighbor down the street through the halfway had his garage door open and he started to walk by his garage. He looked up and the guy's in the garage puts his hand on a big block of wood and takes a great big hammer and just hammers his Gets his hand, oh, 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 the guy's tired. This guy's looking at him. So he just stood there and watched for a little while. And pretty soon the guy sticks his hand back on the block and he takes a big hammer and he hits it again. Oh, he's bent over and tired. And it took about 30 minutes and he finally got to the point he could just almost stand up. And he puts his hand on the block again. The guy takes the hammer and hits it a third time. And I mean, he's on the floor of the garage and just running in the way and ow, 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 ow. And this guy on the street, he can't stand it anymore. So he walks up the guy's driveway to the garage. And the guy finally come around a little bit. And he said, Mr. He said, I've been watching you for an hour and a half. And he said, I've seen you take your hand and put on that block and hit it with a big, heavy... Uh, hammer three different times. He said, what are you doing? What, why are you doing that? And I got to think very simple. He said, it feels so good when it quits hurting. <laughs> That's what we're doing, folks. If you get the correlation, we know what they've done hurts. But we stick our hand back in there for the hammer, and we're doing it to ourselves for our lack of standing up and putting a stop to this garbage. And it isn't going to stop, as I shared with you before, until you and I, we the people, do something about it. A. As a breach of fiduciary duty by the public officers gives rise to personal liability. I was sharing with um, Ray this morning that I read a document from the United States Supreme Court that they ruled unanimously that uh, any public servant that harms you is subject to liability. They used to all claim that they have uh, immunity from any kind of tort suit. That's no longer the case. They will claim that, but all you need to do is to show them that document. So 
all the lower courts have to honor those United States Supreme Court cases. So, what is that document? What is that document, that court case that references that? I forget the name of it. It's kind of an odd name. But uh, if you want a copy of it on the thing, maybe we can talk to Jeff and see about getting that. Okay. Oh, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. It's Tanzan versus Tan Tanvir. Individual may seek damages as a remedy when federal agents violate their rights. And it was a Supreme Court decision ruled by Clarence Thomas, so it's not very old. It's spelled T-A-N-Z-I-N versus T-A-N-B-I-R. There's, and there's three of them. We're going to find the other one. The, uh, the second, my second one is Trezevant versus City of Tampa. T R E Z E V A N T versus City of Tampa 741 F 2nd 336 1984. He was detained and uh, was held for 23 minutes of unlawful incarceration. The jury trial awarded him $25,000 for 23 minutes. So you break that down, that's over $1,000 a minute, which comes to $1,800,000 for 24 hours of detainment. And you can use it against him as case law on a Title 42, 1983. Deprivation of rights under color of law. Yes. Are they personally liable or uh, in their office? No, you sue them individually. Ray addressed the issue of the bond, so that makes it pretty pretty difficult for them to function. Another case that Ray did not mention that I want to be sure and let you folks know about uh, is a case, an Oregon case that where I live called Bloom versus Fred Meyer on a false arrest case. It's B-L-U-M-E versus Fred Meyer. Fred Meyer is a big chain store in Oregon and Washington. The jury, yes sir. Uh, for those that weren't here for Bonnie Thomas, she had mentioned uh, if you can get a policy that describes uh, that it's their policy to to violate your rights, then there's something called a Monell claim, which M-O-N-E-L-L, -L, which is a Supreme Court case for a pattern, a uh, behavioral pattern, pattern in practice, right. as she said. And so, um, yeah, you sue the individual, but the individual might say, well, my boss told me we had to do it, or it's our policy. Get a hold of that policy. Okay. 